Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from the Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the enzyme in the course Enzyme Science and Technology. And in the current module, we were discussing about how you can be able to measure the enzyme activity. So if you recall, we have said that or, or we have in fact discussed that enzymes play a crucial role in two different pathways. Either it is the anabolic pathway or the catabolic pathway. In the catabolic pathway, the enzymes are uh, catalyzing the breakdowns of the uh, multimeric uh, substrates such as starch or glycogen. And that's how they are generating the glucose. And from the glucose, it is oxidizing or degrading the glucose to carbon dioxide and water. And in this process, the catabolic reactions are withdrawing the energy which is bound into the uh, bonds and uh, you know uh, making the energy from these reactions. Apart from that we also have the anabolic reactions where the enzymes are also uh, you know synthesizing the new biomolecules. So and both of these catabolic reactions or the anabolic reactions are very crucial for running the metabolism of the uh, particular organisms. Now, what we have discussed so far is that how the enzyme, uh, you can actually be able to design the uh, different types of assays, different types of uh, radiometric assays, colorimetric assays, uh, fluorometric assays and so on and you can actually be able to measure the enzyme activity. But the question comes that how you can be able to study the enzyme kinetics or how fast an enzyme is actually forming the product. So in the today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the enzyme kinetics and how you can be able to determine the different types of enzymatic parameters and how you can be able to compare even the two different types of enzymes. When we talk about the enzyme kinetics, the enzyme kinetics starts by the enzyme when it recognizes the substrate and uh, it's forming the enzyme substrate complex and then that enzyme substrate complex um, you know, make the rearrangement of the um, bonds and that's how the it forms the enzyme product complex and then ultimately the, since the product does not have the uh, much affinity it is actually going to be released from the active site. So what we have is we have the enzyme uh, which is recognizing a substrate and in this process it is uh, forming the enzyme substrate complex. As soon as the enzyme substrate complex is formed it is actually going to be get fractionated into the two pathway. One, it is actually going to be fractionated that the enzyme substrate complex is going to be broken down into the enzyme and the substrate. And the second pathway is that the enzyme substrate complex is actually going to be form the enzyme plus product, right? This product is actually was the readout when we were talking about the enzyme assays, right? And uh, while we were discussing the different types of methods to measure this enzyme assays, uh, you can be able to say, okay, uh, what is the enzymatic activity at that particular moment. But when we talk about the enzyme kinetics, we have to see what are the different types of kinetic parameters uh, which are going to happen. Now, once the enzyme is actually going to be released, if this enzyme is actually going to come back into the this state right and that's how it is actually going to participate into the another round and that's how these cyclic events will continue and that's how you are going to have the large quantity of the product which is going to be accumulated. Now the major question is in the enzyme kinetics is that imagine that the enzyme is interacting with the substrate and it is having the red constant of K1 with its, which is catalyzing and then it is forming the ES. Now when you have the breakdown of this ES, you can actually have the K-1, right? And that is actually going to denote the red constant for the ES breakdown into the E plus S. Whereas this K, this can be K2, which is actually going to be the breakdown of or the conversion of ES 
into the enzyme plus product. Now, the first and the most important question is that if you want to calculate or if you want to uh, study the enzyme kinetics, you have to actually measure the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex, right? An enzyme substrate complex, measuring the enzyme substrate complex is the bottleneck of the enzyme uh, is uh, studying the enzyme kinetics, right? So, measurement of ES is the is crucial actually, right? It's crucial for studying the enzyme kinetics. Now, the question comes how you can be able to measure the enzyme substrate transition state, right, or enzyme substrate complex formations. Because the timeline of the half-life of this particular complex is very small, right, and that's how you cannot be able to do any kind of, uh, you know, the analytical methods. So you, so, you cannot actually isolate this enzyme substrate complex or you cannot actually trap the enzyme substrate complex so that you can be able to measure, right? And that's why if you cannot measure the enzyme substrate complex, you have to make the different types of assumptions and different types of assumptions to measure the enzyme substrate complex. But before getting to detail of these uh, issues, Let's understand that in this particular discussion, what are different types of symbols we are actually going to use so that it is easier for you to follow the content. What we are going to say is when we are going to say E, it is actually going to enzyme. When we say E bracket, it is actually going to denote the enzyme concentration. When we say E and ET, that is the total enzyme, okay, total enzyme. When we say ES, it is actually going to say the enzyme substrate complex. When we say ES in the bracket, it is going to call as enzyme substrate complex concentrations. PQR are the letters which are actually always been used for denoting the products, whereas the ABC can be used for the substrates. Then you can also use the IJK that is for the inhibitors. And then you can also use the K which is for the rate constant. K1 is actually going to be the forward reactions, K-1 is actually going to be the reverse reactions, Kp is actually the catalytic rate constant or the K2, then V is the reaction velocity and V0 is the initial velocity when the product formation is 0. So, after getting into the detail of these enzyme kinetics definitions, we will come back to the same problem that you are actually going to or you are supposed to measure the enzyme substrate complex and there is no way that you can be able to measure the enzyme substrate complex uh, considerations because it is difficult to isolate. You cannot have any kind of uh, techniques so that you can be able to uh, isolate the enzyme substrate complex. And on the other hand, the enzyme substrate is a very, very transient, right? So, it actually going to be formed and then it is actually going to be broken down. So, that is why it is difficult to measure uh, the accurate amount of enzyme substrate complex. So, if we cannot measure the enzyme substrate complex, you have to make the different types of assumptions in case you want to study the enzyme kinetics. So, we have two different types of assumptions. One is called as the rapid equilibrium, which is the assumption being made by the Henry Michaelis momentum. And the second is the steady state uh, assumptions, which is being done by the Briggs Haldane. And uh, this is the latest approach, this is the older approach. So, what is the rapid equilibrium? In the rapid equilibrium, the early components of the reactions are at equilibrium, permits one to express the enzyme substrate complex in terms of the enzyme concentration, substrate concentration, and the uh, Ks, which is an equilibrium expression. So, one still need a velocity uh, equation to insert the expression for the enzyme substrate complex concentrations. So, let us first discuss about the rapid equilibrium, right? In a rapid equilibrium, what you have is, you have this, right? So, enzyme is interacting with the substrate, right? 
and then it is actually going to have the forward reaction which is going to be uh, responsible for the formation of the enzyme substrate complex and the rate constant for this is actually going to be K1. Then this is actually going to be broken down into the enzyme plus product right and this is going to be called as K2. Now enzyme substrate is actually going to be broken down into the enzyme and substrate right at the equilibrium right so it is actually going to have a rate constant of K minus 1. Now E, S and E, S so as soon as you start the reactions in the initial time points the E, S and E, S are uh, equilibrate right so it's actually going to have the equilibrate uh, very rapidly right uh, compared to uh, so it's going to equilibrate very rapidly right so in at the initial time points it's e s and e s are actually going to be under the equilibrium because there will be no product which is going to be formed uh, rapidly compared to the uh, formation of compared to the uh, formation of E and P, right? So, until the E and P is not being formed, the E, S and E, S are actually going to be under the equilibrium. That is why the uh, velocity of this reaction is going to be called uh, or velocity of this reaction like the, uh, the formation of the E, S ES uh, concentration, right? So, ES formation of ES is the velocity to form the ES is actually going to be that you can actually have the K2 and the concentration of ES, right? So, this is called as equation 1. Now, you know that the total enzyme, so the total enzyme, total enzyme ET is uh, so you have the enzyme here you have the enzyme here so you can actually be able to add this right so e plus es right so that is a total enzyme what is being present at this particular moment when the velocity is k2 es so if you and this is equation number two now if you divide the equation one to by the et right so what will happen is that it is actually going to give you the v by et and this is the concentration okay so we are talking about the total concentrations okay and which is equivalent to the concentration of the enzyme and concentration of the enzyme structure complex so remember that we our main objective is to calculate the concentration of the es right and by doing this we are actually doing this right so then it is going to be k2 es divided by and instead of writing the et i am writing this e plus es right so it's going to be right e plus es right and this is the equation number 3 now now let's move to the next step right so next step is um uh We'll write here again. Sorry. So E plus S is K1, right? And it's going to form the E S, then K minus 1, and K is going to be K2 E plus P, right? So so since the equilibrium is very rapid, right? E S can be expressed. So E S can be expressed in terms of in terms of s right e and ks ks is the dissociation constant ks is the dissociation constant of es right so you can write ks which is equivalent to es 
okay since the es the concentration of es is equivalent to the s divided by ks into e right okay uh, so this is going to be the equation number four right and uh, if you substitute the value of es into equation three so remember the equation three here right so this is the equation three right so if we take this equation and put the values of the es in this value in this equation right then what you are going to get is you are going to get the V by ET equal to K2 in bracket may S by KS into the total enzyme concentration of E, right, divided by E plus S by K, sorry, KS into E, right? And in this, uh, the E is actually going to be cancelled out, right? So, ultimately, uh, so this is equation number 5, okay? And in this, you will see that the E is can be cancelled out from this, right? And ultimately, this is going to be question number 6. Now, once you have this, you can actually be able to say this, right? V is equal to V by K2 ET, okay, which is equivalent to so if you cross multiply both the side by K2 and cancel out E on the right side, it is actually going to give you the V by K2 by ET that is equivalent to S divided by KS divided by 1 plus S by KS, okay? And if V is equivalent to KP into ES, right, uh, then KP ET is going to be the V mass, okay, uh, because the enzyme is going to be get saturated at this particular level. So this is the equation number six. This is the equation number seven. So now if you take the equation number six and seven and you will put all these values, then it becomes V by V max equivalent to S by KS divided by one plus uh, S by KS, okay? And if you simplify, so this is going to be the equation number 8. And if you simplify this, it is actually going to say that V by V max is equal to S divided by KS plus and this is going to be the final equation what you can actually be able to use and you can be able to calculate the enzyme kinetics now if this is this equation has a lot of significance because this equation can give you the many types of answers right remember that in this particular equation you can be able to still be able to calculate the enzyme velocity you can actually do a lot of calculations but there is no term of ES. So we are actually get rid of this ES term simply by expressing the ES in terms of the S, ES and uh, S, E and other kinds of uh, parameters. 
Now let's see how we can be able to use this equation to understand the different aspects of the enzyme kinetics. So if you plot, take the plot, you take the time on one angle and the concentration of the different species, right? Uh, so if you take the concentration on this side, what will happen is that your enzyme, so first talk about the concentration of the substrate, okay? Now, substrate is going to be very high in the beginning right and then ultimately it is actually going to come down right because the substrate is going to be utilized and that's how the substrate so substrate concentration is going to be very high right whereas it is actually going to be come down right and ultimately it is going to be around to zero similarly for the product right if you see the product so at this particular time the product is going to be zero but as you are actually going to increase it is actually going to increase right so this is here the product is going to be the maximum and where the place you see this is the this is the curve of the substrate this is the curve of the product and you see the intersection right at this intersection the concentration of the product is actually going to be equivalent to the concentration of the so, concentration of the substrate is equivalent to the concentration of the product. Let's also see how the enzyme is actually going to be get fractionated. So, okay. So, initially, you are going to start with this amount of enzyme, which is actually going to be the total enzyme and that is going to be the enzyme only. Now, as the reaction will proceed, the enzyme is actually going to be get fractionated into the two uh, three this species it is actually going to be e which is the plain enzyme it is going to be es and it is also going to be the ep right and you'll see that the initially the enzyme is going to be total enzyme right which is like this and then it is actually going to come down right and that in reduction in the enzyme is actually going to be used up in terms of the formation of the enzyme substrate complexes, right? So, if this is the curve for the enzyme substrate complex, right? But at this point, the enzyme substrate complex formation and the conversion of the enzyme substrate into the enzyme is also going to be the same, okay? So, this is all about the simple reaction and how the, pro, uh, the modulation or the dynamics of the different types of species which are involved into the indian reactions are going to be changed now let's go to the next approach the next approach is called as the steady state briggs halden approach so shortly after the reaction starts when the es is actually going to start forming would reach a steady state and this would close to the equilibrium level okay so the steady state assumptions are more accurate. They are actually going to give you the better picture of how the enzyme is actually going to catalyze the reactions. Okay. So what happens is that we'll write again the same reaction, right? So we'll write the enzyme plus substrate. Then it is actually going to form the enzyme substrate complex. And then it is actually going to form the enzyme plus product right and then you will also have the break, uh, breakdown of the enzyme substrate complex and the rate constant for this is going to be k1 rate constant for this one is going to be k minus 1 and this is going to be k2 right and uh, if now you can imagine that if the rate of es formation it is actually going to give you the E plus P, right? And if the E power is very big, then the ES can be calculated even from the ES goes, goes back to E plus S, okay? So if the ES formation is not getting converted into the E plus P, then the ES is getting reversed, right? And it is actually going to form the E plus S. 
Now you see that the what will be the instant velocity? Okay, so instant velocity is v. V is equal to k2 and the concentration of Es. Okay, so this is going to be the instant velocity. Now, this is going to be the equation number one, right? And you know that the ET is going to be E plus ES, right? So, and you know that at the steady state concentration, the concentration of ES is going to be the constant, right? So, at steady state, Steady state means the ES, how much ES is forming, the ES is getting breakdown, right? So that, this means the ES is actually going to be under the equilibrium, which means the rate of ES formation is equivalent to the rate of ES breakdown, right? And this means d es by dt is going to be zero which means it is not going to change right so there will be no change in the rate of formation right and the rate of es formation is going to be the equivalent to the rate of es breakdown now taking this into the account you can be able to calculate or you can be able to derive the kinetic equations. So, uh, what will be the rate of ES formation, right? So, you know that E plus S giving rise to ES, right? That is the rate of formation, right? So, we can write, um, so this is going to be the equation number so this is k1 right so this is going to be called as equation number 3 and the rate of es uh, breakdown that is going to be es giving rise to e plus p and that is going to be calculated by the kp right and E s giving rise to E plus s and that is going to be calculated or catalyzed by the k minus 1, right? So, if you write the rate of E s formation, so that you will write equal to k1 and the concentration of E to the concentration of S, okay? So this is the rate of formation, right? Because you can actually have the K1. So this is going to be the velocity. Then rate of ES breakdown is going to be this and this, right? So you can write K minus one ES plus k2 es and if you want you can take the uh, es common right so it becomes k1 plus k2 so that is a k1 k2 and this is going to be so this is going to be the so this is the equation number four, this is the equation number five, this is going to be the equation number six, and this is going to be the equation number seven, okay? So we know that the rate of ES formation and rate of ES breakdown, now you can just make it equal to each other, right? So uh, rate of ES formation, so at a steady state, the rate of ES formation is going to be equivalent to the rate of 
is dragged down, right? So just right here, right? So K1, E, S is equal to K minus 1 plus K, P and rate of E, S, concentration of E, S, right? Now, <coughs> this is going to be the equation number 8. Now, if you solve the equation number 8 for E, S, right, then the E, S is going to be the, if you solve this equation, the E, S is going to be K1 E S divided by K minus 1 plus K P, right? Now, K1 my plus K P upon K1, so this one, right? So, K minus 1 plus K P divided by K1 is going to be called as Km or it is called as Michaelis Menten constant. Okay, this means you can actually be able to use this instead of this, right? And you can be able to calculate, right? So, uh, if you put all this, you will get this, okay? So you get the V by V max is equal to S divided by Km divided by 1 plus S by Km, okay? Or you can write like this V by V max is equal to S divided by Km plus S. Okay, because you can bring this down and you can, if you rearrange, it is actually going to give you this. Okay, and this is is a very very important equation okay now you can imagine a situation when the s is equivalent to the to the level of k so if you increase the concentration of the substrate which is equivalent to the value of km then what will happen you see that v by v max is equal to s and instead of km you can write s so it becomes 2s right this means v is going to be so if you divide this okay what will happen is that the v is actually going to be v max by 2 and that is a very 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 important clue to calculate the value of K, which means if you calculate the velocity of the enzymes, wherever you will find the velocity is the velocity of Vmax, it is actually going to give you the value of Km. And that's how it is very, very important. So this equation is called as Michael's Minter equation. Now, what will be the significance of the Km into the enzyme kinetics the substrate concentration at which so this is the definition of the km the, the substrate concentration at which the reaction velocity is half of the maximal that is the km is the substrate when the initial velocity is half of the uh, velocity maximum v max it is going to be called as k it is establishes the approximate value for the intracellular level of substrate. This means uh, if you want to attain the velocity of the uh, half of the maximum velocity, you should have the substrate concentration which is equivalent to the Km values. Since it is a constant for a given enzyme substrate, 
it is numerical value provide a mean of comparing the enzyme from a different organism or the different tissue of the same organism or from the same tissue at a different developmental stages. So, KM is a very, very important parameter because KM is a constant, right? And it is constant for the particular enzyme substrate combination, right? So that's why KM is a very, very good parameter to compare the same enzyme from the different sources, same enzyme from the different organisms and even the same enzyme under the different developmental stages. Like for example, if you talk about the lactate dehydrogenase, right? So that LDH is an enzyme which is present in the liver, it is present in liver, blood, it is present in the heart and other places. And so you, but the activity of the LDH is different in the different activity, right? So you can be able to calculate the KM of the LDH and that is actually going to give you a significance in terms of who is going to be more active and is going to be less active because if the KM is lower, it is actually going to be a better enzyme. KM can be altered by the ligand binding which is a one way of enzyme regulation, right? So it's not like the KM is constant, it it's can be altered when you alter or when you make the modifications into the enzyme. If the KM is known, the SA condition can be altered so that the substrate condition is going to be above to the KM so that the VMAX can be determined which is a measurement of the total enzyme. It indicates the relative suitability of the alternate substrate for an enzyme. The substrate with the lowest KM has the high affinity for the enzyme. The best substrate has the highest VMAX by the KM ratio. Now, apart from the KM, you also have the two more parameters which actually can be used to calculate or to compare the enzyme. One is called as the catalytic deficiency, another one is called as the turnover number. So, what is the catalytic constant? Catalytic uh, constant, the KCAT is called as Vmax by the total enzyme. So, this is also known as the turnover number, the number of reaction processes, the number of moles of the substrate transformed per minute per mole of catalytic activity, catalytic site under the optimal condition that each active site catalyzes per unit. Uh, it's important that you should know that the enzyme may have the more than active sites and in that case the calculation has to be done accordingly. However, more complex enzymes have a more complicated expression for the KCAT. When the substrate is very, very low compared to the KM, that is, the very little AS is formed, then the enzyme is equivalent to the total enzyme. And in that case, it is actually going to be give you the catalytic efficiency. Under these conditions, the KCAT by KM is a measure of the enzyme's catalytic efficiency since this apparent second order rate constant which depends both on the enzyme and as well as on the substrate. The rate of the reaction depends on the how often E and S encounter each other in the solution. So, both the catalytic efficiency and the turnover numbers are very, very important parameters which you can actually be able to derive from the, uh, from the enzyme kinetics and that can be used to compare the two different sources of the enzyme. Now let's talk about how you can be able to determine the KM, okay? So if you want to determine the KM of an enzyme for a particular substrate, you have to perform the enzyme assays. So in this particular example, what we have done is we have taken an example of a protease assay where we are actually going to uh, you know, provide the substrate to the protease and we will perform the protease assay and uh, at the end, we are actually going to calculate the uh, KM of the substrate for the enzyme. So, what is the principle of this particular assay? So, in this assay, the casein, which is a protein, is act as a substrate, when the trypsin, which is actually a protease, so this is actually an enzyme, this is the substrate digest the casein, the amino acid tyrosine is liberated along with the other amino acid and peptide fragment. And then you can, uh, since the tyrosine is being liberated, you can actually be able to use the Follins reagent 
to detect the free tyrosine just between and it is actually going to give you the blue color reactions and you can actually be able to measure that using the colorimetric assays and it's going to give you the blue color right you can imagine that if the more tyrosine is released from the casein the more chromophore are generated and the stronger the activity of the protease so what you can do is you can calculate the absorbance values generated by the activity of the protease and compare it to the standard curve which is generated by reacting the known amount of tyrosine with the folin sequelate reagents to correlate the changes in the absorbance with the amount of tyrosine in the microbes from the standard curve the activity of protease sample can be determined in terms of the units which is the amount of micromoles of tyrosine equivalent released from the casein per minute. So the activity what you are going to determine it is actually going to be calculated in the units per ml that is the micromole of tyrosine which is going to be released and you can use this formula to calculate the units. If you want to do this experiment, what are the different types of reagents are required? So you require the trypsin, which is actually the protease. You require the buffers. So you require the phosphate buffers. You require the casein. You require the TCA. You require the folin sequelate reagents. You require the sodium bicarbonate, enzyme diluents, and then you also require the L-tyrosine, which is going to be the standard. And how you are going to perform this? So you are going to follow this particular procedure. So where you are going to incubate the casein with the enzyme and other kinds of reactions and you are going to follow this particular reactions and then ultimately you are going to have the, uh, you know, the tyrosine standard curve. So you are going to run the tyrosine standard curve and that's how you can be able to calculate the amount of tyrosine which is going to be liberated in every reactions what you are going to perform. And ultimately, you can be able to plot that in terms of calculating the uh, K values. Now, uh, the, the result what you are going to get. So, the concentration of tyrosine present in the sample calculated from the experiment is going to be this. And you can actually be able to use this to calculate the activity of trypsin. According to this, it is actually going to be this, right? Now, how are you going to calculate the KM values? So, KM actually determination of KM by using this kind of data is having you can have the two options. One, you can actually be able to do the Michaelis Bentham curve and you can be able to calculate the KM values or you can actually be able to have the line verba plot. So, when you are actually going to plot the initial velocity versus the supernatant, it is actually going to give you the Michaelis Bentham curve. So, what you are going to do is you are going to do the substrate concentration on the x-axis and you are going to plot the velocity on the y-axis and when you are going to do this what you are going to see is you are going to see that the initially the velocity is going to be logarithmic uh, linear and then ultimately it is actually going to form the plateau right because with time with the increase in substrate, it's not going to increase because now at this particular stage, the enzymes are saturated, right? And this is actually going to give you the, uh, the, so this is actually going to give you the Vmax, okay? So because this is the maximum what you got, right? So this is the Vmax, right? Now, and this is the initial velocity, right? What you have plotted against the substrate concentrations, right? And remember that this is a Michaelis um, Bentham curve, uh, equation, right? V max concentration of substrate divided by Km plus S, right? And remember that if so, V max, we got the V max, right? And uh, what you can do is you can just go by the half of Vmax, right? So this is suppose this is the half of Vmax, right? So Vmax by 2 and you if you go like this, it is actually going to give you a concentration of the substrate and that is going to be the Km, right? If you remember, right, we have put that if you if the Km is equal to the substrate concentration, then V is actually going to be half of Vmax, right? Same, same way you can have the 2 km 
you can have 2 km, you can have 3 km like that, okay? And that's how you are actually reaching to a saturation point. So this is one of the way in which you can be able to draw the Michael momentum curve and you can be able to calculate the km values. Now, the question is that uh, the km in this is actually going to be on the assumption that this is, uh, you know, so this kinetics is less reliable because of the so many issues, okay? So that's why people are now preferring that we they should also go with the line mover plot. So in a line mover plot, what you are doing is you are actually going to do the plotting of 1 by S versus 1 by V, right? And in that case, what you are going to do is you are going, what you are going to get is you are going to get the curve like this. Okay. Because remember that in this particular curve, we are actually making the assumption of Vmax simply by going with the saturation curve, right? But that may or may not be correct, right? So in that case, your calculation of the Km is not going to be accurate. And to make the things more accurate, people are going with the line mover plot where you are not going to have any saturation. And this is the point where it is actually hitting the y axis is actually the 1 by v max. Okay, and this is the 1 by v max. And uh, if you have the different time points, right, different conditions, right, of the subject, you are actually going to have these values. And when you extrapolate this curve, it is actually going to hit the uh, x-axis. So x-axis, this is the y-axis. And this is the value what you are going to get 1 by minus 1 by km, okay? And if you, uh, cal if you take this value and you can be able to calculate the km values. So if the substrate is at 0.5 km, right? It is actually going to give you the maximum saturation, maximum point. Whereas for the slope, you can be able to calculate the Km by V max. Okay, and that is also a very, very important parameter to compare the two different types of enzymes. So uh, to explain you, uh, much in detail how you can be able to do the protease assay, how you can be able to use that data to calculate the Michaelis momentum constant. We have prepared a small demo clip and in this clip the students have explained you that how you can be able to calculate the Km from the uh, velocity data. Hello everyone, this is Ina Dodwani from Malaria Research Group, IIT Guwahati. Today, in this video, we will be performing protease assay using casein as substrate. Many other proteins can be used as substrate that is BSA, gelatin, etc. But we will be using casein because casein is easily available and stable under storage conditions. We are using casein as substrate and trypsin uh, which is a serine protease whose enzyme activity is to be determined. The basic principle for this experiment is as proteases cut peptide bonds so it is necessary to measure and compare the activity of different proteases. Here in this experiment trypsin which is serine proteases digest casein and releases amino acid tyrosine along with other amino acids and many peptide fragments. Follin phenol reagents detects free tyrosine in the reaction and give produces blue color chromophore. The more the number of tyrosine produces in the reaction more will be the chromophores generated and more intense will be the col blue color. Uh, the intensity of blue color is directly proportional to the activity of proteases. Absorbance value obtained from the activity of proteases are compared with standard curve which is obtained with tyrosine, uh, known quantity of tyrosine reacted with Follin's reagent. The change in absorbance is mainly correlated with amount of tyrosine in micromoles. We can determine, uh, we can determine the activity of proteases with the help of plotted standard curve. For the preparation of standard curve, we will be using different reagents such as potassium phosphate buffer having 50 millimolar concentration and pH 6.5, sodium carbonate buffer having 500 millimolar concentration, 
enzyme dilutant solution that is sodium acetate buffer having concentration 10 millimolar and pH 7.5 TCA that is trichloroacetic acid 2.25 percent pollen spinol reagent and here trypsin having concentration 2.5 mg per ml which will be which we will be using as protease L tyrosine which we will be using as standard having concentration 0.2 mg per ml and KC having concentration 6.5 mg per ml which is our substrate. For this experiment we have to prepare a standard curve. For this we need different concentrations of tyrosine that is 5 micrograms per ml, 10, 20, 40 and 50 micrograms per ml. For the sake of simplicity we will be preparing, we will be setting one reaction of 5 micrograms per ml in which already I have added 950 microliters of water then from the stock concentration of tyrosine that is 0.2 mg per ml we will be adding 50 microliters of tyrosine then for setting the reaction sodium carbonate and follens reagent is to be added sodium carbonated uh, carbonate is added to maintain ph which be, which can be changed due to this follens reagent so now we will be adding 1 ml of sodium carbonate and 100 microliters of follens reagent Okay. Now as we have set the reactions for different concentrations of tyrosine, now we will incubate it at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. We have prepared different concentrations of casein as we have prepared for, for L-tyrosine. Casein is prepared with the help of stock solution 6.5 mg per ml which is prepared in potassium phosphate buffer. Different concentrations of casein have been prepared from 0 mg per ml to 6.5 mg per ml. Now for setting reaction. Uh, in 6.5 mg per ml we will be adding uh, trypsin uh, that, that is 100 microliters of trypsin same amount of trypsin is added in all the appendrops and now all these appendrops are kept for incubation for 30 minutes at 37 degrees celsius after incubation of 30 minutes at 37 degrees celsius now 500 microliters of trichloroacetic acid is added in the reaction. This trichloroacetic acid is added to stop the reaction of substrate and protease. Now 100 microliters of enzyme diluent solution is also added in the reaction. This enzyme diluent solution is added to dissolve the solid proteases and now these all appendrops are kept for incubation at 37 degrees celsius for 10 minutes. After incubation of 10 minutes we have performed centrifugation at 10,000 rpm for 10 minutes in order to settle down the pellet obtained due to the protein precipitation caused by trichloroacetic acid. Now from this appendrop we will collect 200 microliters of filtrate. in an, another appendrop tube now in this tube 500 microliters of sodium carbonate is added as we have discussed previously sodium carbonate is added in order to maintain the pH change caused by uh, Follins reagent now 200 microliters of Follins reagent is added In all the reactions now all the appendrops are kept for incubation at 37 degrees celsius for 30 minutes in order to develop the blue color chromophores after incubating the samples 
uh, for 30 minutes we have taken readings in UV visible spectrophotometer at uh, 660 nanometer that uh, now then we have observed that absorbance values were increasing with increasing concentration as well as blue color intensity uh, was also increasing with increasing concentrations of both standards as well as casein proteas assay samples now in order to uh, in order to uh, determine enzymatic activity of trypsin and km value we will plot michaelis menten curve which we will be discussing further after completing the experiment now we are going to plot calibration curve for tyrosine standards here are the different concentrations of l tyrosine from 0 micrograms per ml to 50 microgram per ml the absorbance value which were taken in triplicates at 660 nanometer in UV visible spectrophotometer are shown here. Firstly, we have calculated average of different absorbance as shown here and corrected absorbance has been calculated by subtracting absorbance of blank that is 0 0.096 from all other absorbance values. Then a standard graph is plotted by taking absorbance at y axis and concentration of tyrosine standard at x axis. Here we are getting r square of 0 0.8831. Then amount of tyrosine in micromoles has been calculated by using this formula that is concentration upon molecular weight of tyrosine into volume of sample. Here molecular weight of tyrosine is 181.19 grams per mole. Now coming to our main experiment that is protease assay between casein and trypsin. Here we have taken casein as substrate and trypsin as our protease. As after the completion of reaction tyrosine is liberated from substrate casein. To determine the concentration of liberated tyrosine we have taken absorbance values in triplicates for reaction mixture and calculated the corresponding concentration using standard curve uh, plotted before. Uh, the amount of tyrosine is calculated in terms of micromoles, the amount of tyrosine, this tyrosine is calculated in terms of micromoles by using this formula and activity of enzyme that is trypsin in units per ml has been calculated by using the formula that is micromoles tyrosine equivalents released into total volume of assay upon volume of enzyme used into time of assay into total sample taken after filtration. Here total volume of assay was 1.1 ml, volume of enzyme used was 100 microliters, time of assay was 30 minutes and total sample taken after filtration or centrifugation was 200 microliters. Now to plot michaelis menten curve all the required parameters are summarized here. So I am going to copy these values from here. And we will paste these values in the origin software. Here we will paste these values. And we will label x axis as concentration, concentration in mg per ml and we will label y axis as activity, activity in units per ml. Now we will plot the scatter graph from here. Here is the scatter graph. Firstly, scale can be corrected before analysis of the graph. We will make it 0. We will do the same with y axis also. Okay. Now, uh, for the analysis, we will go to analysis, fitting, non-linear curve fit, a dialog box will open in which we have to set parameters like category, we have to set enzyme kinetics, function, we have to set michaelis menten
this is the michaelis menten equation this is the formula for michaelis menten equation that is y equal to v max x upon km plus x here y is the activity of enzyme v max is the maximum activity of enzyme uh, x stands for the substrate which is casein in this case km is the michaelis menten constant which denotes the affinity of enzyme for its substrate theoretically km is the concentration of substrate at which enzyme activity is half of maximum now we will fit this this dialog box shows the vmax value of 0.2 and km of 2.0 now we will open another dialog box by clicking this book one okay this dialog dialog box tells us about accuracy of the curve fitting from here we can say that fit status is 100% succeed, succeeded that is and r square is 0.93 and as we have seen before km is 2.0 and vmax is 0.2 so by the help of this protease assay we concluded that this protocol will enable enzyme activity of any unknown protease in addition this assay is useful for ensuring that proteases have precisely determined activity before using them for further experiments thank you so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here in our in this particular lecture we have discussed about the different aspect of the enzyme kinetics uh, we have discussed about the michaelis menten approach and we have also discussed about the briggs handel approach how you can be able to express the concentration of the enzyme substrate uh, complex and how you can be able to use that for deriving the different types of kinetic parameters ultimately uh, at the end we have also discussed about how you can be able to determine the enzyme uh, the km values from the given data and how you can be able to use and what will be the significance of the km in the enzyme kinetics so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects of the enzymes in this particular course thank you mm -hmm.